Hey, what's up? Welcome to another Adobe Lightroom tutorial. In this video, we will turn this boring sunset image into a much more colorful and warm shot. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file. You can find the link in the description. And now let's go. So here we are in Lightroom. And to start off this air quotes cinematic color grading video, I do want to crop the image first. It's a little bit tilted, so I do want to fix that just like that. And I also want to crop out the vignetting at the top and at the bottom of the image. All right, now with that out of the way, let's do some color grading. I'm always starting this in the basic tab, of course. Here we want to change the profile to Adobe Landscape, which will give us some more base saturation. So everything is a little more vibrant. Next up, the white balance. This is already a very important step for that warm look. Since with those two sliders, we can just pump up the temperature and immediately give this image some more sunset wipes. Just like that. We could play around with the tint as well. Right now you can see a very subtle green color cast, especially in the water down there. So by increasing the tint, we can fix that and just add some more purple tones to this image, which helps for the sunset look. So white balance adjustments are usually one of the first steps for me. But before I can continue with the color grading, I want to fix the exposure. Looking at the histogram, everything looks quite good. Still, I do want to bring down the highlights, which will reveal more details in the clouds. Since we got a lot of bright areas in the sky. Just like that. But to not lose any brightness due to that change, I'm going to pump up the whites. And I'm going to increase them quite a bit, but still making sure to not overexpose anything. So that's looking much better already. Also, I want this image to be sharp, so let's add texture. And for some contrast, I'm going to introduce some dehaze. Perfect. Finally, let's add vibrance for a very colorful image. Just like that. So we can compare the image to before real quick. You can see the colors are a little warmer, but mainly we fix the exposure of the image. But to get that intense warm look, we need to adjust a few more things. So let's head down into the HSL panel first. And I'm always going through hue, then saturation. And for the last step, I'm usually changing the luminance. So first off with the hue, I do want to bring up the orange tones. So those orange color tones just look a little more yellow. And I also want to bring up the yellow tones. All right, now let's switch into the saturation tab. Here I'm going to bring down the orange saturation. This might be a little counterintuitive at first, but you will see why I'm doing this later. Then I'm also bringing up the blue saturation. Again, at that point in the color grading, it, it might be a little bit weird because we have a lot of blue color tones up there in the sky, but just trust me on that one. Now let's head into the luminance tab and bring down the blue luminance to add some contrast to the sky. Just like that. So after those HSL adjustments, the image appears to be a little colder. That's just because I do want to have a very impactful sky and thus I had to change the blue color a little bit up there. However, with the color grading tab, there comes the most important part of that color grading process we are doing for this shot. And that is to apply this very, very warm look. In the color grading panel, we have a few different options to change the highlights, the midtones, the shadows, and we can even globally change the image. I usually start with the highlights and for the highlights, I'm going to apply a very, very saturated warm color tone and just watch what happens. So first off, choose the hue. We're going with the warm color tone. So somewhere in that range. And now let's pump up the saturation. Let's raise it quite a bit. And we immediately have changed the mood of the image. So that's super helpful as you can see. However, now let's go into the midtones. The midtones right now are still a little cold. Again, we can change that by choosing a warm hue. So I'm going somewhere in the yellow range in this case. And now let's pump up the saturation. And now look what happens. So with just those two adjustments, we completely change the image. Then for the shadows, 
We don't want to have a warm color tone, but we do have, want to have some kind of color contrast going on. And here, the opposite of those warm color tones is something in the colder range. So let's apply a cold color tone in here. Uh, I guess I can go a little colder here. That's looking good. But I don't want to have a high saturation as I did with the highlights and the midtones. So let's bring that down. We just want to have a very subtle blue color tone in those shadows. That's looking really, really good. To enhance things a little more, we can use the global color wheel. And again, just go with a warm hue somewhere in the orange range and bring up the saturation. Just like that. And now again, let's compare to before. And you can see we have a completely different image with a completely different look. And again, for this air quotes, cinematic color grading, it's not really about keeping the image natural. It's just about adding a distinctive look to it. So we are on a good way here. We can enhance this image some more, however. For example, for sunset images like this, I like to use the tone curve. And here I'm usually heading into the red channel and pick up the point for the highlights and just drag it to the left a little bit. This will introduce some more red tones to the highlights. It looks really, really good. If you want to have even stronger warm color tones, you could head into the blue channel and here drop down the point for the highlights. Just introduce some more yellow tones. For me, however, that's a little too much. So I'm going to reset that because I quite like the look of it now. Then I can also head down into the calibration tab. And if there's any further color cast like this right now, I can slightly push the tint of the shadows. I really don't want to have any greens in here, but that's looking really, really good. And I also want to adjust the blue primary hue, which I usually do for the sunsets. I'm just dropping the hue and I'm raising the saturation slightly, just like that. So that's looking like a pretty good image. Now, some of you might have noticed I just skipped over the local adjustments in the beginning. That's because I just want to focus on the color grading of this shot first. However, I do want to apply a little bit of local adjustments. So I'm heading into the masking menu and here let's create radial gradient. I just want to add some more brightness to the sky, making sure the center of the radial gradient is outside the image to get a more natural light effect in here just like that. And here, let's increase the whites. This will give us some overexposure, but I personally think in those brighter areas, it's totally okay to have a little bit of overexposure. And it's not that dramatic in that case. All right, now that's looking like a really, really good image. Let's compare to before again. In the end, we have lost the natural look, which is not important for cinematic color grading. You want to have a distinctive look, which we have achieved with that warm sunset tones to give the whole image a certain feeling. So there's not much left to do. Usually at that point, I would skip over to Photoshop to, for example, clean up this image. But in this case, I think we can just use Lightroom and just keep it in that software for this video. For that reason, I'm using the spot removal tool. And to remove sensor spots, we do have a little hidden setting here, which is called visualize spots. So let's just check this. This will make it easier to look for sensor spots. So we can turn up the strength a little bit. And then I'm going to try and pick all those sensor spots. But that's looking good already. Lightroom didn't do a good job of removing that sensor spot, which is really a shame. So that just means I will use Photoshop to clean up the image, but I don't think this will be important for the inf information of this video. So at this point, I hope this was helpful and interesting. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.